Yeah, so our next speakers are from AWS, and they're going to talk about um, using GitOps with Amazon EKS Anywhere. So we have Chandler Hoisington and Joey Wen. Thank you guys so Thank much you. for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, we're, we, we did this last year. It was a great, a great event, and we're excited to do it again uh, uh, this year. So let me get my screen share going here. Um, I'm not going to make it full screen because it sometimes screws up. You guys can see it. Um, so yeah, so as, as mentioned, my name is Chandler. I'm the GM for EKS Anywhere at uh, AWS. And I'm pretty excited to come and, and talk to you all today about where we're at with EKS Anywhere. Um, last year, we showed a similar slide like this during our talk. And um, a lot's changed, but a lot's also the same. So I, I set a little context on on this before, before we get too far along. Um, there's a lot of ways to run Kubernetes at, at Amazon now. Um, starting, and I always like to think about it kind of like a scale of manageability where on one far end of the spectrum, you have you know EKS Fargate where you can essentially give us a, a container and it gets deployed and most of the, the operations are handled for you. Um, and if you're a customer and you're like, I just want to give you a container. I don't want to have to spin up a control plane or do upgrades or worry about auto scaling or any of that stuff. I just want to give you a container. That's a really good option for you. But for some customers, they might want more control and less of a black box feel. So they might say, okay, I want Amazon to run the control plane for me, but I want to kind of pick the node sizes and do some different things. And that's where EKS with managed node groups comes into play. Um, and then customers will be like, hey, that's still a little bit too black box. I, I just want you to run the control plane and I'll attach my own worker nodes. Um, and that's where EKS, like just standard EKS that we launched in 2018, that's that offering. So if you're running in, in region in, a, in the cloud, there's a lot of options to run Kubernetes. And we've kind of checked most of the boxes that kind of depends on what the customer wants to do and how much control they want over, over the worker nodes. Um, now, if you're not on in region, and that's where my group comes into play, what Joey and I work on, there's also a lot of options to run Kubernetes uh, outside of the cloud. Uh, the first being on Outpost. So if, you, if you're a customer and you have a data center and you have space in your cage for a rack, you can buy an EKS Outpost and get a very consistent experience with your workloads in the cloud um, on Outpost, and EKS runs there today. And there's actually soon going to be two ways to run EKS on outposts. Uh, the first being how it works today, where the control plane actually runs in a region and the worker run nodes run on the outposts. Um, but some of our customers are saying, hey, we need to be able to survive uh, a short period of disconnect, you know, like one, one day to up to a week of disconnect in case of weather events or, you know, some kind of catastrophe. Um, so we need the control plane and the worker nodes to run on the outpost itself so it can survive disconnect. And that's, um, that's a project we're working on right now that's going to GA later this fall, um, which will allow you to run in essentially a disconnected mode on, on outposts. So if you're saying, okay, that outpost is cool, but that's, that's not for me. I have, you know, I need to be able to run Kubernetes on a smaller device um, that's more durable. That's something we're also going to be launching later excuse me, later this year, and that's EKS Anywhere on our snow devices, which is pretty cool. Um, and then lastly, if you're a customer and you're saying, okay, I have my own hardware, I don't want to use Amazon hardware, I have my own hardware, I've, I've you know, um, I'm locked into some leases or, you know, I, I have some specialty hardware I want to run in my data center, that's where EKS Anywhere comes into play. And that's what Joey will be doing the demo on today. And um, that's, that's really the, the most flexible way to run Kubernetes outside of Amazon, uh, cause it can run on, on pretty much any infrastructure. And then underlying all of these offerings is our EKS distro. Um, by the way, EKS anywhere and EKS distro are both open source products. You can check them out on GitHub, but underlying all these Kubernetes products is a consistent set of builds, um, that is based on, uh, Upstream is in no way a fork of any kind, but we do apply some patches and we do our own supply chain security and we publish them to our uh, container registry and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's what EKS distro is and it kind of underpins all of the Kubernetes offerings at AWS.
So diving into EKS Anywhere a little bit more, uh, the reason why we built it is uh, we really wanted to give customers, well, there's a few key reasons. Obviously, you can see the slide, but there's a, a few other key reasons. The first being we really wanted to give customers a kind of a one-stop shop experience for support. Um, if any of you have ever stood up a production, you know, Kubernetes platform on, without using one of the managed services from a cloud, um, it, it can be a lot of work. And in not only that, you have to decide which vendors you're going to procure um, support from. And, you know, we wanted to help solve that problem by kind of saying, hey, if you run EKS Anywhere, any component we ship with EKS Anywhere, whether it's built by Amazon or it's an open source component, we're going to support that for you. Um, so that was that's one big value proposition there. And, and the other one that I'll call out here is just the consistency between EKS and EKS Anywhere. Um, so if you're an EKS customer, and you're running workloads in the cloud, we can give you the most consistency, not 100% consistency. No, I don't think anybody can promise that. It's obviously very different environments. Um, but I think we can say, because we build both of those products, that we'll be able to provide the most consistency between those two worlds. Um, and that might be consistency through UX, like um, our CLI or our APIs, or that could be consistency on just how the control planes are set up and operated. Um, for example, in Amazon EKS, we run etcd in kind of what we call unstacked mode, um, where we run etcd on its dedicated nodes. And we, we, we have a similar architecture for EKS Anywhere on-prem so that you have a, you know, a consistent operations between those two worlds. Um, so that's the idea. I'm talking fast because we want, I want to get to the important stuff, not all these uh, business architecture slides, uh, which is the demo that Joey will do in a second. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of the idea for EKS Anywhere. That's the value prop. That's how it fits into the AWS strategy. Um, and last year when we stood up here on uh, our virtual stage, we and we were announcing EKS Anywhere, but we also were, it only was available on vSphere with Docker as like a optional for kind of dev purposes only. So it didn't really make sense to call it EKS Anywhere at that time, but it does make a lot more sense to call it EKS Anywhere today because there's a lot more uh, ways you can run EKS Anywhere, mostly in beta form, but I did want to kind of like lay out all the ways you could do it because most of these things are going to be dropping either in the next month or the next two or three months. Um, so as mentioned, you can run EKS Anywhere on Docker. Obviously, we don't recommend that for production, um, but the, the production way you can run EKS Anywhere today is on vSphere. But then coming very soon is four other ways that you can run EKS Anywhere. The first being on top of CloudStack, um, that's in beta today and we'll GA later this year. Um, the second being with Nutanix. Uh, also, I, I, I get confused on what we call these things. Sometimes that's called early access. I, I don't really know the difference between that and beta, but it's, it's not quite GA yet um, is the idea. And another one being on our snow devices, as mentioned earlier, um, which is also in beta, which will GA later this year. And then the one I'm most excited about is actually bare metal, um, which will GA and uh, hopefully three weeks, knock on wood, um, as long as that all goes well. And, and that's giving you the ability to run it on really just commodity hardware, any hardware that you bring. Um, and we're really excited about that as well. So looking forward, where are we going? Um, and how does GitOps fit into all this? Joey will talk a little bit more about that. She has a couple slides. Um, so I don't want to steal any thunder on her side. But we have this concept of curated packages with EKS Anywhere. So uh, EKS Anywhere itself is really does the CRUD operations for the cluster. It spins it up, you know, it, it, it upgrades it, it can delete clusters, it does those types of things. Um, but on top of that, we also are providing kind of those packages that we're providing that one-stop shop for support on, as mentioned earlier. Um, and if you are connected to the cloud, which you absolutely do not have to be, this can all run independent of any connection to AWS. But if you happen to be connected to AWS, Obviously, you can take advantage of all the great AWS services that Amazon offers, um, even if your workloads are running on-prem. So you might want to push metrics or um, time series data to our managed Prometheus um, and view, you know, view them in uh, Grafana. You can use that all with our, our managed offerings in Amazon. Um, but we also know that customers need certain things on-prem locally. So one of those things might be a local registry. So Harbor is, is what we ship with EKS Anywhere. Another one might be an ingress controller, service type load balancer, all these components that need to kind of round out the experience of running Kubernetes on-premise. We we're going to bundle 
something in each of those categories and provide support for that. So you can see on the left the things that we already do today and the kind of technologies we've decided, which may may or may not change. You know, most likely will not change. Um, but you know, if one of these things was to go away, we would still obviously provide that functionality. And then the stuff on the right, that 2023 20, and beyond, is kind of the stuff that we'll start adding over time as optional packages that, that you're able to, to use along with EKS Anywhere. And if you do decide to use those, they would be supported if you uh, purchase support through us. Um, so, so yeah, I, hopefully that answers any questions people had about EKS Anywhere, how it fits into this whole thing. And I think Joey, um, I'll hand it over to you uh, and you can kind of talk over how Flux fits into this and show a demo of what's going on. Okay, sounds good. Give me a sec. Okay, I assume everybody can see my screen now. Um, so yeah, hello everyone, I'm Joey. I've been working on this awesome feature where we integrate Flux to our platform so that our users can like easily manage their EKS Anywhere cluster with GitOps. Um, so one of the goals we aim for is to provide an like easy, straightforward deployment option that allows users to like create and operate Kubernetes cluster across platform, whether it's on cloud, on VMs, on prime machines, edge devices, or any other environment. So we often see customer runs multiple Kubernetes workload across cloud providers and on-prem locations, and sometimes using kubectl command to deploy and manage those clusters offers a lot of control and immediate feedback but it comes with limitation. So it's really hard to like audit, review, recover, and trace. So for this purpose, we adopt GitOps methodology that uses Git as a single source of truth to define the underlying machine infrastructure and manage the provision of the cluster in a more declarative fashion. So, I remember on last year's GitOps day, we presented how a user can create a cluster with GitOps enabled and upgraded simply by like editing some of the cluster config file in the Git repo. This year, EKS Anywhere brings more provider support. We have AWS Snowball, which is an edge device for local storage and compute. Uh, like user can transfer data between on-prem services and Amazon S3. To give you an idea, it looks like this. So it's just a big box here. Um, we also integrate with Tinkerbell, a bare metal provisioning engine for infrastructure and application management on bare metal machines. So the magic part of having a GitOps workflow integrated into EKS Anywhere is that we can actually only use one single Git repository to provision and upgrade all the workload clusters across those platforms. And here's how. Um, first, the user needs to like create an EKS Anywhere management cluster with GitOps enabled. The management cluster itself has all the cluster API controllers, Flux, EKS Anywhere cluster controllers installed and running. Those components are the core parts to help provisioning and managing new workload clusters that ideally host user applications and workloads. Um, then the user can simply define a new workload cluster config file, push it to the same Git repo where the management cluster is at, and then that's everything. What happened internally is that the Flux controllers apply the workload cluster resources to the management cluster, and then EKS Anywhere cluster controller reconciles and start the provisioning process of the new workload cluster. In the end, when the cluster is created, user can fetch the kubeconfig file of the workload cluster from the management cluster secret and start accessing it right away. So this is just an example laid out of the Git repo that manages multiple clusters across platforms. Now I like to walk you through a video, a terminal I recorded two days ago because it involves creating and upgrading multiple clusters. I did increase the playback speed a bit to fit the timeline. So what I'm going to show is actually an actual user experience that demonstrate the provision workflow in the previous slide. 
And here we go. So the first thing I did was to create a vSphere management cluster in VMware Cloud. We first um, define a cluster config file with flux config specify. So you see it has a git repo name, which will be the repo to store all our clusters config files today. We export, um, save the file, we can export the vSphere credentials as EMV bars. as well as the GitHub token that will be used by Flux to in interact with the repo. And then we can just run the create cluster command with this cluster config file. And you can see here from the logs, we have certain operation like create bootstrap cluster, install cluster API, provision management cluster, installing Flux toolkits, creating and pushing those resources to the Git repo, et cetera. And uh, once the cluster is created, we can always export the kubeconfig file to um, point to the management cluster. And you can see we have all the core components I mentioned before, the Flux controllers, cluster API controllers, EKS, Anywhere cluster controller managers. And um, you can also access the cluster object, the nodes, and the machine spec for this vSphere management cluster. The next in line, we are creating a local dev Docker management cluster. Same thing here, we first define a cluster config file and then we configure flux config to use the same git repo. And then we can run the create cluster command. Again, it's very similar to vSphere management cluster. After we export this kubeconfig file to the Docker management cluster, you will see it also has a core components in there. So this is Docker. The next thing, let's create an EKS Anywhere cluster on our new Snowball Edge devices. So we first SSH into a, um, we call it admin instance that's located inside a Snowball device. Again, we define a Snow specific cluster config file with machine spec like the army IDs, the EC2 instance type, SSH key, et cetera, and the flux config same to the other two clusters we export some Snow AWS credentials, the CA bundle files that's defined in my local machine. And then we can run the create cluster command again. And you will see all the similar logs here. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. So the idea is very similar. You will be seeing the positive that running nodes all in ready state for this snow cluster. So now let's just recap a little bit. We have three management cluster across three platforms, providers up and running using our CLI tool. Now, um, currently, there are two ways to create workload clusters. First, by using the same CLI command. Second, is to GitOps or kubectl. So next, I'm going to show both ways. Um, like, for Docker and vSphere, we will be using CLI again. For Snow, we will be using GitOps. Okay, let's see. So here, we want to run create command to create a Docker workload cluster. This time, apart from the workload cluster config, we also need to specify a kubeconfig argument that points to the Docker management cluster kubeconfig. 
and the provision time is much faster compared to creating a management cluster since all the core components are ready there in the management cluster and they don't need to be installed in the workflow cluster again. Then here we're just using the same process to create a vSphere doc, uh, workflow cluster by exporting the same credentials and GitHub token. We can run the create command here. And I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Mm, after cluster is created, you can access the logs, the nodes, and pod status. So right now, we might wonder how my Git repo looks like. Remember, so far as a user, we didn't really manually interact with the repo at all. We simply specify the flux config in each of our cluster config file. So let's take a look of the repo. Let's um, clone the repo and cd into the EKSA demo repository. You can see here, EKS Anywhere automatically lay out the file structure and push cluster config files for each cluster on user behalf. We have one management and one workload cluster under Docker, same thing for vSphere, and we have only one Snow management cluster under Snow directly. Now, let's try to create a Snow workload cluster with GitOps only. So what we want to do is, firstly, we create a folder under the Snow management cluster. Then we define a EKSA cluster config file for this workload cluster. Just vim into this EKSA cluster.yaml. Mm, I just pre-define and paste everything here. The spec is very similar to the Snow management cluster, except the object names. We save the file. Another thing is I also define a customization file so that Flux knows to reconcile this cluster config. So we save this file. And now we can simply add commit and push all those changes to the Git repo. And that's everything. Now we can always just go back to, to the Snow instance. We can check the management clusters, Flux controller logs, the EKS Anywhere cluster controller log to see the actual cluster provisioning step. So here, Flux controller, you will see the actual commit ID it applied to this management cluster. And for the EKSA controller logs, you will see the actual steps. We do apply CAP objects, install Cilium, stuff like that. So when we watch the machine object, you will see the new machines being provisioned in Snow devices. And um, just checking a bunch of logs again. After this cluster is created, we can then literally just fetch the workload cluster config from the management cluster and start accessing it. You see the pods and nodes. Um, one thing to notice here is if I look for machine resources in workload cluster, it throws an arrow since this CRD is only defined in my management cluster, not workload cluster. So after this workload cluster is created in Snow, we can also just simply scale it up by changing the control plane and worker node cons in the Git repository and update those cons, save the file, and push again.
Again, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here. Um, here is just I SSH back into the Snow device and I check the logs to see if this commit actually triggers the EKS Anywhere cluster controller to reconcile. And you will see again when you watch the machine object, there are new, you know, worker nodes and control plane nodes to be scaling up here in provisioning states, provision and finally into running state. So again, we can check the cluster object. You will see the new Snow Workload Cluster 1 is there, and all the machines are provisioned. And we can, again, um, fetch the workload clusters kubeconfig file and check the pods to see if they're all running well or not. So here I have created one snow workload cluster. And in the end, I also want to do another operation, which is I want to upgrade my existing vSphere workload cluster from Kubernetes version 1.21 to 1.22. Plus, I also want to add another brand new workload cluster to this Snowbot Edge devices. So how can I do that? I can do this all through my one Git repo. So here I just go back to the Git repo, pull the changes first, and you see we have all the cluster config clearly specified here. And the first thing I want to do is to just edit the vSphere cluster. Hi, Joey. Sorry to jump in. Wait, wait, you um, talk about five minutes over the allotted time, so I just wanted to check. Okay. We are now actually a talk behind. It's okay. We were behind schedule, so we gave you the allotted time, but you actually talked for more, so just check. Okay. In. Yeah, I will try to end soon. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, so what do we want to do is we simply um, change the edit the vSphere workload cluster config and also we add another workload cluster for snow and commit those changes to the git repo and in the end we'll see everything working and all the cl new cluster being provisioned and updated accordingly so that is pretty much it I hope it's not too hard to follow. I think the idea is very simple. Technically, for any provider EKS Anywhere supports, users should be able to use GitOps to run its workload cluster for cluster lifecycle management, meaning creating, upgrading, deleting those clusters, whether it's from the same Git repo or not. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. I have the demo repo here if you're interested. And yeah, that's everything. Thank you, much. thank you so much again. And uh, we're always here to listen to help. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, to you and to Chandler. Um, as I was mentioning, lots of questions have been coming in uh, after the end of the talks. So um, please stick around. I think Chandler's already answered some. Uh, so thank you so much, and we'll see you in the Slack.